All right. Okay. So now, Alhamdulillah, everything's good. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, speak it. Okay, so welcome everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome. Uh, so you are, uh, apologies, thank you for your patience for the drama before. <laughs> All right, there's a technical issues. I'm muted again. Uh, Afif, help again. <laughs> <laughs> Why Dr. Rebecca is muted? Uh, otherwise, uh, we can make a co-host. Yeah, so, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Some technical issues again. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to make you co-host, Dr. Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Can I anymore? Maybe, Dr. <laughs> so, but I think you're all right now, okay? Okay. okay, thank you so much. All right, so let's just begin. Let, let us know if there are any issues, uh, technical issues. So I have several of my uh, students here. I hope they are fifth. Uh, that's why I asked you to come here and Kisti and all other <laughs> students to help me out. All right, uh, so let's just start the session. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sejahtera everyone. I'm so glad to see everyone here. There are 73 participants and that's quite a turnout for me. Usually, uh, to tell you the truth, usually my events are only 20, 30, 40, <laughs> all right? Okay, not so popular, unfortunately. All right. So I am Dr. Rabiah Adawia uh, from IUM, or uh, in IUM, people know me as Dr. Ruby. Uh, so I'm uh, a lecturer, I'm a um, lecturer, saya pensyarah from Jabatan Bahasa Inggeris dan Kesusasteraan, or what we, uh, uh, from the faculty uh, in UIA, we call kuliah. Uh, there's a term, Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, IOKHS. So it's the biggest school, is the biggest faculty in UIA, and my department is under that faculty. So this uh, session that you guys are attending today is under is organized by Child Bilingualism Center of the Kulia. Um, so they have several research center. So that's a center untuk study, untuk kaji perkembangan bahasa kanak-kanak. Jadi sebelum ni kami buat sepatutnya lah, selalunya kami buat macam pasal perkembangan bahasa kanak-kanak. Tapi since the pandemic, we also try to get creative and um, organize program related to children. So like today, Alhamdulillah, so this event has been in planning kan Dr. Rebecca, since I think I contacted you in August. Yes. Yes, yes, in August. Um, yeah, so uh, it, we have planned for this event since August. Uh, so I contacted Dr. Dr. Rebecca. So allow me just a little bit. I, I'm not taking the spot from Dr. Rebecca or Dr. Tazrin, just a little bit to introduce, uh, to tell us the background of uh, how we come up with uh, this session, this seminar today. Actually, in August, before I contact Dr. Rebecca, so lagi in July, August, we had an, uh, a talk on digitalization, children digitalization and pornography. So in that talk, um, I invited one psychologist and also another one for a child of it, officer from Sohakam dealing with child matters, child related matters. So during that event, we receive a lot of questions on sex education. And then that, that's why I came up, I, I thought that, okay, we need to come up with one specific um, session just to talk about sex education. And hence, here we are, Alhamdulillah. So I would like to, uh, first, I'm very honored because two, uh, I, I managed to invite and they accepted my invitation. So we have two very prominent speakers. I will, uh, I will introduce them now. So first we have Dr. Rebecca Lee. So Dr. Rebecca Lee, a Lee Pei -en. And, okay, so Dr. Rebecca Lee Pei -en, uh, she's the co, she's one of the co-founder of Sexual Health Yes. So if you guys don't know what's that, um, you can look up on Instagram. Kalau tak tahu, tak boleh tengok dekat Instagram. I'm impressed with what they have done. So there's a, they are, uh, Dr. Rebecca, uh, we can say that uh, a group of enthusiasts, right? A group, that's what, yeah, how you describe uh, Yeah, we call ourselves enthusiasts. Uh, in the area of sexuality education, mm. we are a group of medical graduates when we uh, started this project, but we are all now doctors. Mm, all right. So yes, Dr. Rebecca is a, a, doc, a junior doctor at Penang General Hospital. 
right? So Dr. Beka will be one of our panel. The second panel is Dr. Azrin Abdullah. Okay, Dr. Azrin, how are you, Dr. Azrin? All right, so Dr. Azrin is an activist. Um, in uh, Dr. Azrin, can you explain a little bit about Malaysian Against Pornography? So there's a movement, there's a group. Uh, it's an NGO, actually. Oh, okay, there's an NGO, okay. Registered NGO, a non-profit organization, uh, and we aim. Uh, we used to be known as Mothers Against Pornography, but oh, then, okay. um, yeah, October two thousand fifteen, we have to change our name because some fathers want to join in. Okay, <laughs> 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 Malaysian Against Pornography. Okay. Oh, all so right. the aim is to um, educate, yeah, educate uh, Malaysians uh, about the danger of pornography. Uh, preventive measures and also uh, how to actually um, uh, help yeah, those who are actually involved in pornography. So we have several modules involving several children, uh, several age groups, and also parents. Uh, and, and, and part of the modules, uh, one of the modules is talking about sexual education. Uh, ah. So that's, that's my uh, passion lah. Apart from other, <laughs> of course, apart from other very, very other contributions, uh, 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 I just want to tell the audience that Dr. Azrin is also our lecturer. When I said our, you are here, I am lecturer uh, with uh, Kulia of Medicine. All right, so uh, I think we can start the discussion. So, how it goes, uh, 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 we will have a very casual session, tapi casual pun kena ada structure, kena ada struktur. Otherwise, sampai pukul 12. <laughs> tak habis, 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 tiga pagi, tak habis. <laughs> Jadi, uh, I will ask several just general basic questions to our panel. After that, then after the uh, panel kita dah present, um, then uh, kita boleh buka lah question and answer a uh, question and answer to audience. My hope is at least because about I letak nine forty five. Kalau kita nak extend pun fifteen minutes lah ten lah paling lambat part ten lah ten thirty macam lama lama sangat too too long right. All right. So without further ado, kita begin first dengan um, so. Uh, I, there is, as I mentioned, uh, this is a sequence from that digitalization and pornography. And um, as a mother, much like tadi Dr. Azrin mentioned, uh, <laughs> mothers against pornography. I think, yes, I think most mothers are worried now, especially when it comes to online learning. Online learning, uh, not because of online learning, but the fact that our children, kanak-kanak sekarang, dah memang exposed lah to, the, to the internet, or I would say most, most of their waking hours. Right, so uh, by hook or by crook, sex education is important now. But where to start and what it is, I think the first most important we have to know is what is sex education. And just just a little bit of fun fact: when I first uh, keluar kan the poster kan, <laughs> can sex sex education uh, guide for parents. Someone ada lah a few tanya I apa kan uh, apa sex education ni? Uh, what do you mean by sex education? I think in their mind, which is a stigma. Okay, which is a stigma for many Malaysians, is as if we promote sex. When you say sex education, you are teaching people how to do sex. So that's why many Malaysians are against it. So maybe we can start with Dr. Rebecca um, to help us understand what is sex education and how is it different from all the other terms. Sebab ada kalau, kalau kita Google, ada sexuality, lah, ada reproduct, uh, reproductive uh, health subject, education, all. So ada banyak terms, kan? So maybe Dr. Rebecca can uh, explain to us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ruby. I think that's a very relevant uh, question to many Malaysians because like you said, we use different terms, but uh, most of us are talking about the same thing. We're not talking about educating sex or sexual activity, but a syllabus to teach uh, sexual health education. So uh, to understand the different terms, we need to first understand what sex, what is sexuality and what is sexual health mm -hmm. for sex? Usually we use it to mean two different meanings. So it can be biological sex, um, which is a physical characteristic, like, like something that is assigned when someone is given birth. Mm -hmm. So it can be male and female, that's sex. Sex can also mean sexual activity. So mm -hmm. these are the two meanings of sex, but they are not related to sexual education or sex education, because sex education itself is very wide, sangat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can be um, about um, sex itself, but not actually. So we don't teach 
children how to perform sex in <laughs> sex education. Mm. So it's more about um, the biology part of it, the physical part of it, the physiological part of it, and the emotional part of it. But for sexuality, um, sex is a component of sexuality. Mm. So sex is under the biome of sexuality. Mm -hmm. So sexuality, aside from sex, we also talk about other things like pregnancy, reproduction, gender, sexual orientation. And for sexual health, it's even wider. It's a broad range related to sexuality. For example, um, we also talk about consent, privacy, uh, hug, hug, woman. Um, and, and also you said just now, there's also this term sexual and reproductive health. For reproductive health, it's mainly about the health of our reproductive system. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's quite confusing. There are many terms, but actually it's uh, about the same thing. It's just that last time um, the syllabus, when it was first developed, it was mainly used um, to educate children against HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. So along the time, when, when time passes, the syllabus expands itself. And the latest standard um, syllabus that most countries follow the syllabus of comprehensive sexuality education, which is a syllabus developed by the UNESCO. So it encompasses everything. It's more than sex, sexuality, or sexual health itself. It's uh, about safety, about uh, relationships, cultures, and values. So there are many terms that it can use, but actually the name doesn't matter so much. It's more about the content that matters. And uh, if that's a standard or a gold standard you want to follow, it would be a comprehensive sexuality education. Mm -hmm. yes. I hope you understand that's a very brief overview of what um, these different terms mean for sex education. Uh, just, just, just a little bit lah, because I read uh, your, uh, I, um, I, I get to know Dr. Rebecca because I read her letter <laughs> on, I think, Code Blue, right? Or is it Malay, Malaysia Kini? But, yeah, it was published in several news outlets. So. Yeah, yeah, it was published on several news outlets. So you mentioned about uh, these uh, reproductive and how, uh, maybe uh, just briefly. So uh, I know this is not related to parents, but um, because at the moment, most of this sex, sex uh, so, so Dr. Rebecca, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. So is, is it okay to use the term sex education first? It is okay if you understand what it means, but if you still think that sex education is about sexual activity, then don't use it. But actually, we should break the stigma and just use the term because we all know that sex education is not about sex. It's mm -hmm. about sexual health, uh, the overall sexual health. So you mm -hmm. can use it, but um, actually in our history, um, in the Ministry of Education used to call their sex education syllabus, um, um, the sexuality education or sex education, but because there were a lot of misunderstanding from parents who object at that time, or you don't believe in the terminology of the sex. So in the end, they changed it to something like reproductive health syllabus. Mm. So that's because of a misunderstanding. Tapi, to answer your question, I think we can still use the term. The term doesn't mm. matter actually, it's the content that matters to me. I like the fact that you you use stigma. So now, uh, kita bertanya dengan mothers against <laughs> mothers against pornography. So Dr. Azrin, you uh, in our conversation, you mentioned that you have given uh, plenty of talks um, to parents can about sex education. So uh, kita still lagi dalam definition ni. So do you think parents are they comfortable with this term, sex and sexuality? I mean, based on your observation, which one in they use actually? They prefer to use maybe because of the cultural taboo, ni kan? Yeah, yes. Uh, the, the word is taboo lah, eh, taboo. Mm. Uh, the the misperception uh, eh, mm. uh, about sex education makes this topic a taboo and make it difficult initially to actually make parents to be involved uh, in the education. Eh. Uh, so actually, um. When we, uh, in our module, we did not use sexual education. <laughs> Tell you the truth. Eh? We use uh, kesihatan reproductive, but sexual, uh, uh, reproductive health and sexual mm -hmm. health. Uh, when what we're trying to say is actually sexual education. Yeah, it's, it's uh, sedap lagi titling untuk mendengar ni lah eh, for our, our culture. Because of the taboo, uh, we change it, but we are talking about the same concept. Yeah. But... Um, it's very important, first and foremost, for parents yeah, to 
actually accept that what, what is sex education? The definition of sex education is not just about uh, promoting, it's, it's not about, sorry, it's not about promoting sexual activity, but it's about promoting healthy reproductive uh, system and function and also the sexual function, which is a component of a reproductive uh, health. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Tapi from your experience kan, um, with uh, the parents, is it, is it, I think that's not an easy task at all to make them understand. What, yes. what, what do you think? I mean, from uh, your observation. Uh, um, it's not definitely not easy, but Alhamdulillah, if you actually point out the reason why, the importance of it, uh, you get the uh, full participation. They actually uh, start implementing or start practicing in their household. Lah. Eh? Uh, explain lah to them. Eh? Um, like like uh, future parents here, some of them are very young <laughs> or, or parents who are listening. Uh, first and foremost, we need to understand that children, they're very inquisitive, right? Very inquisitive, very eager to learn. Eh? Uh, if we do not explain to them, eh, uh, they will find from other uh, resources and eh? they will nowadays we have mr google we have mr youtube so if we do not provide this uh this information they will somehow find it, find out about it mm -hmm. so we need to establish very early as parents as edu child educators that we need to be the main source of information of children mm -hmm. uh, rather than you know mr google because there, <laughs> those are not rooted <laughs> and accessible 24 hours right mm -hmm. and then explain about the importance other importance yeah, to, to, uh, that, that usually helps. Uh, for instance, you, know, you need to get the children to understand the role. What are their roles as males and females? Mm. Uh, not just understanding their own, but the other uh, gender role when it comes to reproductive health uh, and sexual health. So uh, otherwise, they will not um, learn to respect each other or you know, uh, understand the function of uh, each other, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, we need to accept that uh, men and women, yeah, we complement each other, right? We complement each other. Even in the structure of the reproductive system, mm -hmm. we complement each other, right? Uh, so we need to accept the fitra, lah, a fitra of male and female, which is to reproduce. Uh, we, uh, we understand that, then we inshallah um, um, accept, right? accept that we have to you know, uh, open up. And educate our children. So, banyak lah all the other important things are among the things that we need to highlight to parents lah. Yeah, yeah. To, to, yeah. to break the taboo. <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I will come back to Dr. Azrin shortly. Uh, maybe we, we can go to Dr. Rebecca. Uh, Dr. Rebecca, so um, uh, having, de having defined this sexuality, sexual education, and then the other one, reproductive health and sexual education, maybe you can give us uh, some picture of how it is how is the landscape what is what is the situation of sex education in malaysia now because uh, if we google uh, mr google ni kan kalau kita google memang banyak reference lah yang uh, kat us uk i mean western countries uh, naturally they are even even though they have issues but i think compared to us they are very progressive lah when it comes to this kan but what about us can you at least macam give us uh, with our cultural taboos and all that. So what is the situation now in Malaysia? It is actually sexual education. When we talk about this, um, we will often think that um, parents would think that this is the responsibility of teachers and teachers would think oh, it should be conducted by parents because you are the one who is going to instill values in your children. So there are always this um, uh, role that both sides need to play. In other countries, for example, both parents and teachers, they take responsibility in giving, delivering sexual education. But in Malaysia, uh, because of it being a taboo topic, most of the responsibilities now still fall on the shoulders of teachers. Mm -hmm. So sexuality education, it's actually within our sleeper since um, late 1980s. So in the beginning, it was in different um, subjects, for example, in science, um, in biology, in, in, in um, faith-based uh, subjects. So it was scattered everywhere in moral and all. But after that, uh, we began to realize the importance of sexuality education. And then we have a particular subject. It was called uh, Pendidikan Jasmani dan Pendidikan Kesihatan, PJPK. 
And then in recent years, um, I think about 10 years ago, we shifted it to a single subject alone, which is a Pandidikyang Kesehatan. So we can see that actually teachers in Malaysia, they also take up a responsibility in teaching children about sexuality education, but there are still shortcomings because teachers sometimes are not empowered enough or confident enough to deliver this subject. For parents, um, it's the same. I think many modern parents nowadays, they want to teach about um, sexuality education, but because they were from the generation who didn't receive sexual education from their parents, so they themselves do not know how to start. Mm -hmm. So in Malaysia, I think different from other overseas modern countries, um, it's like a, with, uh, like a baby in sexuality mm -hmm. education. Both parents and teachers are trying to navigate their role, finding their role where they stand in the landscape, like, like their role in sexual education. But I think it's uh, optimistic because more parents want to learn. That's why I, um, I think we have many uh, participants and audience here today. And I think there will be a shift of responsibility from teachers and parents or a shared responsibility in the coming years. Mm, you're right, you're right. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Dr. Rebecca. Uh, you're right. Uh, I think um, um, when it comes to this uh, in Malaysia, parents still yet to open up, so they leave to the teachers to, <laughs> to teach. Can. So, Dr. Azrin, have you, uh, uh, so in your NGO activity, have you actually, uh, what, did, what do you see? Um, do you think teachers uh, are, also, are also open? when it comes to this <laughs> sexual education, sexuality education? Uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, well, I'm just representing Pahang here. Okay, from, tak tak uh, tak uh, usually, betul lah tu. Betul lah kalau represent Pahang. We, we, uh, we receive overwhelming um, invitations from the teachers uh, to talk to the, uh, to the uh, school children, mm -hmm. usually uh, standard six, yeah, after UPSR, usually before the pandemic. And then uh, form three, you know, form five. And you usually call us when there's something going on. <laughs> like if the, from the ashram or the boarding school, if they notice there's something, you know, coupling, uh, you know, or, mm. or um, more than that, usually. Um, 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 there's some uh, pornography, you know, found. And they will start calling us to give talk, which is a bit Sad because it should be before it actually happened, but, mm -hmm. but we still do the overwhelming response, unfortunately, because we are all volunteers. <laughs> so we can only, um, um, you know, just uh, accept a few. So I you would know, like to take this opportunity lah, for, for everyone's listening to be part of, it, of, of this sex education. Because uh, the teachers, yeah, some of them, uh, yeah, they teach, but they do not know ways of you know, conveying the, the, uh, the messages. Eh? Uh, sometimes they feel scared as well. Mm -hmm. Some of the teachers are scared if they, if they the teachers, you know, talk about uh, sex education, you know, they get complaints from parents. They do actually express that. Eh? At least, you know, we, <laughs> they can oh, see. What do you mean, get complaints? Uh, some parents, uh, maybe sometimes uh, we show pictures, yeah? Pictures, even though we don't, uh, for children usually, we don't really use any real pictures, just use cartoons. Yeah? Some parents, uh, unfortunately, I think it's still too early uh, for, for them. I'll show later on, yeah, uh, when I will share on uh, the, the mal, mal, milestone lah, eh, on how we actually educate. Uh, so it's a bit controversial, but uh, something for us to uh, discuss. Lah. Oh, okay. All right, right. Thank you so much for that. So, um, okay. Uh, um, ni, to, to us, may, maybe anyone, sama ada Dr. Rebecca ke Dr. Azrin ke, you, you can, before we move on to the practical part tu, uh, I think this is, uh, maybe semua orang dah tahu, tapi it must be, it must be spoken from experts. So, kenapa, kenapa penting sex education ni? Why do you think it's important? Yeah, I've mentioned uh, two points just now, right? The the importance and uh, the first one thirty two basically into um, the children, yeah, to um, uh, know their role. Yeah, and, uh, that's the second one, like, And the first one is because they are naturally very inclusive. Yeah, we mm -hmm. need to be the first source of person. That's why it's very important. And secondly, it's because they need to understand their role because um, if they do not understand their role, the function you know, of them being male, being female, then they get mixed up and they will misuse their role. Eh? 
with mm. uh, because we have culture here too uh, that can influence the upbringing. Eh? So we need to set them uh, align. Eh? Uh, uh, other imp uh, importance of giving them uh, sex education is actually we need to uh, for them to understand the changes because part of the sex education we teach them also about the puberty and what to expect during puberty and what are the changes of uh, puberty and we also teach them um, um, ways to prevent and this I think this is the most important uh, the most important of the important uh, <laughs> reason why we want to educate our children on uh, sex education is for them to learn to protect themselves. Yeah? Uh, that's, which is why uh, the, the, the sex education needs to start from home. Uh, as early as two years old. You'll see the timeline later when I share, inshallah. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Uh, Dr. Rebecca, do you want to add to that? The importance of... Yes, um, I would yeah, like please, to. Please, please. Okay. Yeah. Jump on. <laughs> I think Dr. Ashwin used a very important word there. It was understanding. So the essence of sex education is actually to make the children understand why they need to do this and not to do that. In Malaysia, we used to emphasize on abstinence-based education, where we purely told our children, mm. don't do this, but we never let them understand why. Mm. So the aim of actually sex education in the end is actually to empower the children to make decisions for themselves so that they have that decision-making capacity. They know, they not only know why, uh, know that I shouldn't do this, they, they also know why I shouldn't do that. That's, that's how um, sexuality education is effectively delivered. In fact, um, there are many evidences that show that um, sexuality education actually delay the age of initiation of sex when it's properly conducted. So sex education not only delay sexual activity, it also reduces risky behavior like uh, multiple sexual partners, it reduces uh, sexually transmitted diseases. This uh, teenage pregnancy, these are all proven, like they did research on sexuality education and found those outcomes in children. So I just want to share that um, children nowadays are already a lot of them are already having sex. In fact, the National Health and Morbidity Survey 2017 shows that 7.3% of um, 13 to 17 year old teenagers in Malaysia are already having sex. That's a lot, isn't it? In 100 um, teenagers, 13 of them already had sex before. So children nowadays are already having sex. So what Dr. Asmin said was um, a very true. We need to teach them, uh, let them understand why uh, sex too early may not be good for them and how to prevent pregnancy if they are already doing it it's because that's just something that's already happening and we can't avoid and we want to empower our children yes 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 i think that is very true i just um, uh, um last time when um, i mentioned that we have that the first uh, you, uh submit, the first webinar on digital digitalization and pornography and the psychologist actually talk, uh, mentioned this and, and she was saying this um she, i think that was in one of her research that um in uh, for unwed teenagers uh, sorry uh, pregnant teenagers of course obviously unwed pregnant teenagers and in their research they found that those teenagers uh, who got, got pregnant out of wedlock they have no clue uh, they have most 99 percent of them have not received any sexual sexual education at all and i read this uh, this is uh, one thing from my reading that i i found funny that uh, funny but it's also uh, pain, uh, it's also scary that one in five malaysians believe that sexually transmitted disease could be transmitted by mosquitoes. <laughs> like really, <laughs> like really. So yeah, I think that somehow highlights the importance of um, sexual education, even more now, especially now with uh, children going online all the time. Yeah? All right, um, before we move on, um, I just want to ask, uh, all right, this is the part that, um, Maybe we can go to Dr. Azrin first, then we go to Dr. Rebecca. Ah, Dr. Azrin, so now you are mothers and okay, so the uh, activists. Um, can you tell us, the parents and also the caretakers, what are, how do we actually talk to them? How do we actually talk to two them children? How do we even start talking about sex to our children? 
because just now suddenly yeah, there's a technical glitch on uh, <laughs> my computer as well. You can you hear me, right? Oh, yes. Okay. But no. so, um, I think before, before we want to start talking, um, talking or giving examples and how we actually talk, we need to um, understand there are several, uh, several principles right, when we talk to children uh, about sex education. Eh? Uh, the, uh, the first thing that we must uh, uh, appreciate is the most important principle is it needs to be tailored according to their age group. Uh, okay? And when I say age group, it needs to start as early as two to three years old. Okay? Um, and it, it needs to be given continuously uh, okay? until they are teenagers. We don't wait until they are teenagers. Baru nak cerita. Tunggu puberty datang hit, baru nak cerita. No, no. We start at two to three years old. What we talk about? Sejak lagi. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, when we do the communication about sex, uh, education, uh, reproductive health, about sexual health, we need to use clear uh, language. Bahasa yang jelas. Eh? Tak boleh guna kias-kias. Tak boleh guna bunga. Tak boleh guna B. Tak boleh guna Betul, tak boleh guna bahasa yang kata orang betul ya. Dan ikut perintah umum, I'll give you the examples later. Okay. And then, uh, we need to uh, ensure that the surrounding is safe. The the, the child usually yeah, needs to be um, uh, feel secure when we talk about this. So don't talk this over dinner table. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so especially when we want to talk about you know, the process of kejadian manusia, things like that, yeah, the productive uh, process. Okay? And, and if you want to encourage them to open up, you don't talk about this at the, the dinner table. Maybe in the car when you pick mm. up the child. If you have teenagers, then make a point. So I have enough kids. So I have to be gile gile. gile gile, have this me time with the me, mama and uh, me time. Okay? So I take turns. Like to this week, you know, uh, you company me to uh, shopping, things like that. So I have that moment with them. So give that, find that opportunity and make sure. Um, you do not laugh at them yeah, if they ask well, so called you know, and you do not get angry at them if they ask you know this unbelievable question. Okay, all right, you must be the best actress. <laughs> oh, okay. actress, okay, yes. Dalam hati rasa nak menjerit apa? Tapi when you actually uh, you hear to their uh, when you they actually listen to their uh, their question. Yeah. Okay, buat muka cool. Yeah. Maintain cool lah kata budak-budak zaman sekarang kan. Yeah. And then, um, you also need to find, uh, always find the opportunity to talk about this matter. Yeah. Tak boleh tunggu anak buka, tunggu anak cerita pasal mimpi. Yeah. Especially when nowadays, mimpi basah tak semestinya berlaku. Uh, nanti saya cerita. Okay. <laughs> and then, apart from looking for opportunity, uh, when we, we, we want to talk about sex education, we try... Um, and relate to the greater purpose in life. Uh, again, kalau the Muslim, we relate with, uh, apa? Uh, uh, yeah, I think all religion can either, either apa, um, explain about the greater purpose of creation, okay? not just the Muslim. And, and for the Muslim, we can just relate, you know, uh, this is why, you know, uh, kita boleh kaitkan dengan tawhid lah, eh? kita cerita, kan? Uh, apa? Uh, it's not just uh, for uh, whatever we have in this world, eh? it's not just for uh, short-term pleasure, again, it's for greater purpose, again, macam tu. So we always try to relate this. So that's the main principle lah that I can see, okay, generally. Okay, so when I say uh, uh, we talk according to their age group, just now I say as early as two to three years old, apa hal Dr. Azri ni nak cerita budak-budak umur two to three years old, eh? because at this age, generally, they, well, they can start talking and identifying, betul tak? So hmm. what do you do yeah, with this age group? So you need to start identifying the reproductive organ. Ah, kan tahu tak apa dia? <laughs> Tengok mak ayah pula tak tahu apa dia reproductive organ. Okay. So we need to tell them that like I mentioned just now, you cannot use the word B and the word uh, bird or bunga because it has been known sexual predators, pedophiles will use these terms to lure kids, to show them their private parts for their own sexual you know, desire or like whatever. Like okay. You must be right to tell them this is, yeah, this is kemaluan. At two to three years old, can we, you can just say this is kemaluan. If you can say kemaluan, this is uh, lubang lubur, eh, quite well you actually, when you actually want to actually uh, you know, wash them, you know, take them to the toilet, yeah. 
you need to ask permission, okay? And make that as a habit, yeah? At that young age. Okay, I'm going to touch your command now, okay? So that, why are we doing this? We are trying to teach them that he, that, that part is their heart. Heart mm. dia, badan dia, tak siapa-siapa boleh suka-suka touch. Uh, that's what we're trying to teach at that very early age. Okay? And we teach them these parts, kemaluan ni, ya, kalau yang perempuan cerita lah, pasal dada ni tak, it needs to be covered and kena timbulkan sifat malu. So, kalau anak-anak tu 3 years old, janganlah tukar pampers dekat tengah-tengah depan mm. hal, uh, living room tu. Kan? Bawa pergi bilik. Betul tak? Mesti ada yang mengaku, oops ah, kan? Ah, saya pun dulu sebelum belajar pasal... Saya pun, saya pun, oops. Tapi <laughs> anak dah besar. Okay. Ah, sekarang tak terlambat lagi lah sebelum pas anak my, my boys lah sempat dah practice. <laughs> okay. So we teach them to use towel when they go out from the toilet. So they know, eh, they don't easily show this to anyone. Okay. And then, there's something that only certain people macam boleh nak tengok. Ah, okay. Alright. So these are... Sexual education, uh, jangan salah ertikan. So, so at two to three years old, let them know the parts, yeah, the name, the correct structure, and try to start um, uh, teaching them about rasa malu and heart dia. Ni badan dia, heart dia jangan bagi siapa. Then, at this early age also, you can just tell with the, you know, uh, you, this is your body parts, you're a girl. And then kalau kata, ya kalau dengan naik kecil-kecil kan dia just open, dia tak malu kan, dia tunjuk je. <laughs> kan dia kata, ah yang tu abang, abang, ya yeah, boy. Sebab tu dia macam tu ya, eh? dia ada uh, penis. Kalau if you think, you know, your child, some kids are very advanced, you know. But generally, can just use general term. But once they reach to preschool age, you can start introducing terms. Like, you know, you can use, uh, um, apa, the word zakar, eh? Melayu lah, atau penis. And you can use that. It's not a problem. It's a scientific word. Cuma kita nak sebut pun malu. Tak tak? <laughs> right? So preschoolers uh, add more details to the structure. And then it's, uh, what's important when, because they started uh, going to school, you need to tell them zone larangan sentuh. Ah, bukan zone larangan. Banyak lah zone larangan. Zone larangan sentuh. So apa dia zone larangan sentuh? The parts, the kemaluan, the dubur, and for females, uh, the dada, buah dada. You kena cakap di this area, dada, buah dada, tak boleh orang sentuh. And one more for males as well, for boys, cakap the lips also tak boleh orang sentuh. So when we tell them, mm -hmm. jangan lupa, jangan cakap tak boleh orang sentuh juga. Cakap juga, kita pun tak boleh sentuh orang punya. <laughs> Sebab... This is actually real, real, mm -hmm. uh, real, yeah, kejadian lah. Eh. Something happened yeah, in one, um, to one of the activities. Eh. They went to the nursing home, eh, telling the kids, you oh, know, jangan buat ni, jangan buat ni. Tapi dia lupa kat dia nak cakap. Maksud ni pengajaran lah. Dia, dia tak cerita, jangan pegang orang punya cakap. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> tak jumpa anak ada, anak dia lelaki lah kan. Dia mesti buat, buat kerja ni kan. Yo, saya dia ni, dia ni lah anak dia tak ada. Mana saya cari tak jumpa. After 15 minutes, nampak anak dia macam a bit macam well, very weird. Dia buka dia expression dia. Tanya, what happened? Dia kata ada pakcik ask him to hold his private areas. Ah, kan? So, so we need to teach them that. Bila dah cakap zona larangan, ya, yeah, part of the sex education, you teach them. If you feel comfortable, uncomfortable, if you rasa tak selamat, you need to get, you know, help. Either you say no, you shout, you tell mama, you tell baba, you tell teacher, okay? But this is another thing that we realize, we forgot usually, cakap kalau dalam bahaya, mesti minta bantuan. But kids at that age, preschoolers, they don't know what bahaya is until they actually see the real danger, kan? Because sometimes, yeah, they look just like, uh, because yeah, most, most of the, apa, uh, kejadian tentang in pedophiles, kita tengok from the statistic, also involve family members. So we tell them, when your heart starts beating very fast, when you start berpeluh, tangan menggeletar, nafas laju, ya, maknanya kita rasa tak comfortable, then you need to do something about it. So those are, at very beginning, we're telling them how to protect themselves. Lah. So we're going to and identify their emotions. So, so those are the education. Lah, okay? So at this very age, a very early age, juga, it develops introduced pasal uh, Kan, macam mana mak, mak, manusia dijadikan, kan? Tunjuklah gambar kahwin kita yang comel atas slim-slim <laughs> slim tu, kan? Tunjuk, ya? Yeah? 
uh, because at that age, because my kids at that age, you know, preschoolers dah start tanya dah. Eh? Eh? Where do I come from? I would do. Okay. Masa tu tak pandai memang jino lah. Eh? So right now, in there, you can show your pictures. Yeah, after I get married. So this is the important uh, early stage we stress to them. Like, as Muslim, we, 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 we want yeah, the values to be close to the, uh, to reflect our religion, our belief. So we say, yeah, we get married and then uh, because we love each other, okay, and part of me, and part of Baba, eh, okay, combine and then the will then become you. Uh, at that age, please tak pay detail detail lah. Eh? They will uh, uh, feel happy and if they start to become inquisitive again they will ask you again then you can just add on to it okay so di tadi preschoolers ah laju laju ni laju laju so lepas ni boleh boleh apa uh, rebecca boleh sambung so when they start going to school when they start um, going to school tu macam mana we need to start teaching them the differences and the tadi dah dah ada tipa lelaki perempuan the differences of the structures so that they will appreciate yeah uh, this is how I should behave. Yeah, uh, this, this, they are different. They, they're not the same as me. So, like that. there's some ways of behavior. If you are Melayu, you can say, orang Melayu, orang Melayu, you can say, aurat lah. And so, that's it. Then, kita kena ajar. And then, um, and also, yeah, you, you teach them the differences. Yeah, when they're, uh, tahap satu, yeah, tahap satu, dajah satu, dajah satu, dajah satu, kita tak cakap, bukan mereka. Uh, okay, kalau pergi balik kampung, biasa lah kan, ada longgok je kat luar. <laughs> Kat luar rumah tu tu kan ha, Pakai seluar You teach them that yeah? so Because And then Jangan tidur sekali Sebelah boy yeah? Cousin Walaupun cousin kan A Boy area sana Girl area sini you know, From that very early age So those actually ha, Sexual education yeah? Jangan underestimate lah Sebab Because Pernah ya yeah, uh, When I was um, uh, My uh, officer Dekat uh, Ceras lah um, I have to actually examine the the kids who are uh, in the kan rumah kanak-kanak tentu budaya. So one of the girls yang datang sekejap kat situ adalah anak-anak yang ayam English friends. And one of these is a uh, key member very, very sad because dia diperkosa. Eh, diperkosa oleh abang sendiri. Okay. And and um, many instances lah. Eh, when when uh, children, yeah, siblings, they, they when they want to explore, sometimes they explore too, yeah, with each other. Uh, so that's why it's important. Kita daripada awal, uh, kita establish yeah, tentang the differences and how to behave. Right? Okay, now, uh, so, so lepas tu, bila dah, dah masuk preschool, uh, dah, sorry, bukan preschool, dah masuk tahap satu tu, dah boleh inclusive sikit, sikit pasal balik. Yeah, pasal puberty. Dan kita kena puberty lagi, dah kena jaga. So just something like that. So once they start age uh, 9 ke atas, 9 ke 12, meaning puberty age, yeah, kalau yang keturunan syarifah cepatlah sikit, 9 years old, betul tak? Eh? And we need to start talking about puberty. Uh, apa tu puberty? Bila tu balik? Apa maksud bila kita dah reach puberty? We need to talk about, seba, uh, kalau yang lelaki for instance, let's talk about the males, more interesting. Okay, selalulah dulu-dulu lah, dulu-dulu kan. Eh? Selalu, selalu, selalu mak bapak tanya, dah mimpi belum? Dah mimpi belum? Okay. Yeah? Kalau zaman sekarang, uh, these are uh, real uh, kata orang tu stories are shared by parents. Eh? Tanya anak-anak sampai umur 15, 16 tahun, eh, tak mimpi-mimpi. Tapi ni saya dah keluar suara dah jarang macam mana doktor. <laughs> suara dah berubah. Kan? Kaki berpuluh habis dah. <laughs> Bawa badan saya tak keluar. Tapi dia kata tak mimpi-mimpi. Because you know what? Dia kata tak ada mimpi basah. Dia kata no wet dreams. Because yeah. Uh, unfortunately, because of the Mr. Google, Mr. YouTube, the kids can access many things in the internet. Eh? And the pop-ups, the app pop-ups is very cool. Eh? They also you know these are the children eh? uh, surfing the net and they will start you know, entice them with many, many videos. Eh? And then uh, just uh, like kissing, things like that. And they start to become teruja, eh? stimulated, sexually aroused. And then uh, later on, can actually work. Eh? I mind me. So some of them tak perlu pemimpin basah. Eh? Dah keluar mind me, dah balik lah. <laughs> okay. So to parents yang anak lelaki lah. And then once they that we, uh, you need uh, this old, apa, usia balik ni, you need to teach them. Talk to them. Okay, once you reach this, uh, okay, you have some changes, physical changes, okay? So that they understand, tak ada dia rasa depressed. Kenapa berjerawat tiba-tiba, okay? Ataupun yang perempuan, kenapa sakit dekat dada, right? Huh? And ini, ini kenapa ketubuhan ke apa kan? So they, they will feel anxious kan? So you have to talk about that. These are the changes that you need to know that, that you have. And as, as for the uh, 
uh, anak perempuan is you need to start packing them the hygiene kit a uh, hygiene dipanggil apa hygiene pack ke apa uh, masukkan uh, dalam bag sekolah dia eh plastik so ada dalam extra pads eh because they usually will follow the mum lah about the same age and masuk dalam bag supaya dia tak rasa malu lah eh mungkin tak rasa takut pula bila keluar darah warna dalam suara dalam dia so these are the um Uh, the general, general main thing, yeah? main theme when we talk about sex education, uh, just to show you the progress, once it's puberty, once the puberty, apa pula nak tambah ni, apa pula nak tambah, kena cerita about the uh, process of reproductive, uh, uh, the process of um, uh, kejadian manusia tadi, nak campur-campur dia cakap tak apa kan, balik boleh, 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 boleh. I, I explain in uh, campur-campur pun tak apa ya. So, hmm. so you tell them about the process kejadian manusia when you keluar money, you just need one ya, one uh, sperm ya, one benih to actually cause pregnancy. So you tell them that. So and 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 after talking about this, you need to somehow you know, slowly telling them. You start feeling a little bit sometimes change in your emotion as well ya, because of the hormones ya. Uh, it's, it's common to start having feelings about uh, other people. Yeah? Okay, to, to introduce je lah. Uh, dia, dia tak cerita tak apa, tapi dia tahu, oh, my mom is quite open about this. Yeah? So maybe if I have feelings, yeah? so you can tell them, if you have this emotion, you just let me know. Okay, we can talk about this. Mm -hmm. So when actually, inshallah, hopefully when they're teenagers, when they start uh, 13 to 17, okay, uh, ataupun before they are adult, lah, young adult is 18, right? So then they start, Uh, sharing with you eh, when they have feelings. So, so the teenage uh, age, teenage ni memang a bit delicate because you need to talk about love. Yeah, that you need to understand the physiology of love. Why lah kan? Uh, bila orang bercinta ni kan dia sanggup lah kan apa? Uh, mendaki gunung lah kan? Love is blind kan? Uh, love is so many things lah kan? Sweet like candy lah kan? Why? Because there are hormones yeah so that is why we need to be open we need to be um the best actress because they are having this uh renjatan hormones not just the female hormones or male hormones but also the we call it the love uh, love hormone as well and that actually explains the behavior uh, which is why kalau dalam islam kita be encouraged to actually prevent jauhi yeah jauhi Uh, Lina dengan bukan dekat dalam aku antara dengan Walina jauh ini Lina gitu. So you can see the progression eh. Nampak macam mana kita uh, explain to them. Kalau nak uh, explanation tu boleh tanya. Tapi generally I will just try, uh, try to show you how it should start early and evolve and add on as the child mature. Okay. Alright. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Azrin. So that's uh, that's yes. That's a, the general picture of the progression. So Dr. Rebecca Uh, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to say that what uh, Dr. Asrin described just now was very comprehensive and I believe will be very useful for many parents. I agree to many things that Dr. Asrin said and I just want to emphasize that um, three points. First, be opportunistic. Sometimes I understand it's hard for parents to start because Like, kalau lah you tak pernah cakap at all for like 10 years already, but suddenly you want to start talking about it, you just don't know where to start and how to start, right? It's good to use the uh, examples that Dr. Asrin has given, but sometimes I think parents could also be a bit shy because they just never tried it before. So I just want to say be opportunistic. Sometimes you don't need to purposely find time to see it, do it. Sometimes if you see, for example, uh, your neighbor is pregnant, Uh, so you can already ask your kids, hey, what happened to that? Um, do you know what's inside the lady's uh, stomach um, or, or the abdomen? And then you can go on and explain uh, little by little. So, or, or even when you're watching TVs with the children, just take every opportunity and, and just go on with the topic. And there are also things that parents um, unintentionally do but they shouldn't do because we are just brought up that way. For example, like Dr. Asrin said, like exposing their children in front of everyone when they are already growing up. Or, you know, it's very common even in Chinese society, like if the kids are crying, begging you not to be hugged by someone else, some relative, but you still 
ask them to be hugged, like, like oh, go over that, that uncle wants to hug you. It just teaches them that um, they don't have rights to their own body. So that's something that we don't want to do and want to avoid at all. Right. And, and in daily lives, there are just many examples that we can Google up. For example, we keep telling our kids, oh, you lelaki lah, lelaki tak leh nangis when they're crying. But it's actually not true. You are just suppressing their emotions and make them feel even more stressed out because they are just guys, they can't express their emotions. It's it's not that way. So there are things that we do not because we purposely sengaja nak buat. It's just because we are brought up that way. So it's good to take time to reflect on ourselves. Like suddenly we will realize, eh, I've been doing this, but maybe I can do it another way. So um, also something that's very interesting, like for example, when you're looking on the internet and you saw someone kissing in a drama with your kids of 10 years old, would you try to shut down the TV or divert their attention or you take that kissing opportunity, the kissing scene to talk about something else. So it's it's all about being opportunistic, I would say. And also be generous in using resources. You know, in YouTube, there are many videos that you can use. Like you can Google out, like talking about puberty for uh, nine-year-old kids. There'll be a lot of cartoons. You can um, always watch with your kids. And then after the video, you can talk about it. And finally, I just want to emphasize that it's never too early or too late. Because um, even though we should start at age of two, but three, but let's say you already, your, your son is already 12 years old. Is it, you, you might think, oh, it's too late already. But it's never too late. It's, it's better than never starting it at all. So just start it slowly, but slowly even though uh, it's already late, but it's not too late. Mm. So these are the main points that I just want to add on. Yeah, yeah that, that is, uh, I think, uh, very enlightening from what Dr. Azrin and Dr. Rebecca um, mentioned about. And um, the, the, I think the, for me personally, the, the, Dr. Azrin, the fact that you mentioned, can I, can I use the real word? Because I put that. I'm sorry, I put much malu. Anak I dah 10 years old. I'm still using uh, 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 for the private part, hoo-ha. <laughs> <laughs> the hoo-ha. <laughs> so, tapi, tapi, you, you're right, you're right. Actually, kena macam start using the scientific term, tu kan? Um, okay, uh, uh, Dr. Azir, kita, uh, I will go to Dr. Rebecca. Dr. Rebecca, because in your um, sexual health, uh, yes, or shy, you mentioned um, the card, uh, card games. Can you tell us about that? Yes, um, we, some friends and I, since last year, we have been creating a card game. It's, you know, parents usually, they don't know how to start, like kickstart conversations. So we were doing a card game where parents can play with their children, like play Uno, play a card game. So parents still really play with their children. Then children will try to answer questions in order to win the game with parents. So parents can take the opportunity to um, teach their kids uh, about the topics that were asked in the card game. So in the card game, there's also resources like, like answers that are already tailored for parents so that they can already know um, how to answer difficult questions that will arise from the card games. So it's just an own initiative from us and it's in the beta testing phase. That means we are signing up for parents to test out or up and buy, up and buy, and we're improving and we're looking forward to publish the game um, um, very soon. So it's just a social project, but I think it's good for us to kickstart because locally in Malaysia, kita tak ada sangat resources untuk parents teach uh, children. Sometimes, like Dr. Ruby say, there are a lot of resources online, but mostly maybe the language problem or, or different values that you want to convey. So we don't really have local resources. We have, but not a lot. And sometimes it's only in the form of books, videos, rather than something fun and more attractive to modern children, for example, game. Mm. So that's something that our team is trying to do. And if you follow our social media page, you will get more updates on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are looking forward. I am looking forward for that. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go to Dr. Azrin. Lah. So this is a very, uh, because you mentioned about the progression, can Okay, and also I want to draw uh, into appeal that the, uh, Rebecca mentioned. It's not too late can, to introduce sex education to our children. Okay, Dr. Azrin, I, and I screwed down. Okay, mm -hmm. I've never talked about sex. And even uh, even the private part, so now 
people like me and i think there are many <laughs> like me kan so how do we start now should we start with uh, yang introduce the uh, private part ke because i think at at age, at age state uh, umur 10 tahun ni anak ada tahu lah dia punya private part and all that kan and i do i because of safety reason nak pergi sekolah tu i do teach her lah okay tak boleh bagi orang pegang ni so macam umur 10 tahun ni umur yang cakap 9 hingga 12 kalau dia kalau anak-anak ni tak pernah di introduce dengan sex education kita terus introduce macam mana ni kita terus je macam okey sex ni macam ni macam tu ah <laughs> uh, uh, i think yeah um banyak like light like, light like what uh, Rebecca has mentioned just on spine I can banyak banyak apa okay? alat bantu nowadays eh uh, so i also agree in terms of uh, using the 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 internet yeah um, but of course uh, with supervision lah okay so uh, you um somehow you just need to do the uh, um that double check double check whether what they understand is correct so you still have to uh, the, uh, at least uh, i usually you know encourage parents to remember along the way you, know, you, you always have when you talk about sex education these are the main points lah at number one tadi tu is about apa uh, uh, the the structure yeah so structure so betul ke yang dia faham structure hmm. uh, the structure and the function yeah so at 10 years old you already can tell the okay uh, you know right uh, two kalau female kan you know there two holes right eh? the, you have to explain about the uh, external reproductive organ and the internal reproductive organ and then it's not just the holes you need to understand it to tell the, the right of course the right uh, term kan kalau perempuan ada faraj, eh? ada lubang kencing, saluran kencing. Hmm. Dia dekat faraj, kira saluran ni keluar dari rakit. Dekat situ lah. Eh? Lepas tu, hmm. uh, lepas tu dekat faraj ni juga, eh? tempat uh, uh, yang bersambung ni, berjaya. Berjaya ni, dia dekat uh, bahagian dalam, eh? dalam badan kita yang kita tak boleh nampak. Uh, dia dah bersambung dengan rahim. Bila uh, kan gambar-gambar yang ada dekat dalam internet tu, kita tidur dan rahim ni ada di mana tempat ya selalunya bila ada uh, um, baby ah uh, dekat situlah baby uh, melekat ya and then dekat dekat dinding rahim tu bahagian dalam dekat situlah darah hit eh asalnya darah hit uh, uh, asal kepada darah hit ni maknanya puncanya adalah dinding-dinding ya eh, yang menunggu dinding rahim yang menunggulah untuk pencantuman um, apa nama zodiak dekat situlah ya hmm. okey so yang explain yang explain lah uh, procedure okey and then beritahu kalau yang lelaki pula kan dia tahu okey dekat ah uh, ya apa ya, ya, zakar kan mesti dia ada skotum pilih cerita yang kantong ni skotum dan ada testis kan yang kat sini lah benih lelaki lupa tadi yang perempuan cerita lah ada kilang telur rahim hmm. ni bersama dengan kilang telur ya yeah? uh, benih wanita okey yeah? so and then kita start explaining kan macam orang kata kata kalau ada pecik okey mungkin hari ni jangan bila kita bercerita tu jangan longgokkan semua okay. information satu kali stop okay. dulu <laughs> Reminder to myself tu <laughs> jangan sesekali harum kan. Wangi, <laughs> right? Hmm. Especially some kids will think ya, yeah, kalau macam tak biasa kan, ini buai sader lima, gross dah. <laughs> Kejut tu lah. Kalau mesti this five minutes talking very intensely about this. Okay, nanti nanti. Eh, you remember not talk about that kan? See, you know not how. You can tell their knowledge. And sometimes they know already. They just don't even know already. They might just talk too. Yeah, as far as you know why, macam orang kata cakap tadi, you know uh, how apa tu get pregnant? Eh? At ten years old, you can test the knowledge of you. If you can explain, eh, uh, then you can just add. But like I said lah, usually, ah, uh, but kita start uh, gunakan values yang kita nak anak kita pegang. Bila kita nak ada values, yeah, the 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 religious values, the lah, uh, the yang yang dia pegang. Contohnya, having sex after marriage, then you just tell lah. Tak adalah cakap tu kanan, mak nak macam ni, no, no. Dia kata yeah. different style lah, kita tak boleh dengan anak-anak zaman sekarang. Kita cerita kat dia, okay, just like us, okay, mama, baba, okay, before uh, we have you, yeah, we got married, and then, because we love each other, yes, yes, we love each other, you know, and then uh, we start to have an intimate uh, relationship, we start to have sex, uh, sex uh, sexual uh, uh, relationship, okay. So this sexual relationship will then cause, uh, each of us to contribute eh menghasil um, apa cantuman benih eh yang akan nanti dengan izin Allah as muslim aku ustaz dengan izin Allah bila bercantum dia akan menghasilkan bayi 
Ki dan Rahim wanita. So that they understand, yeah, the with the the relationship. You know, all this is not just for short term pleasure. It has something to do with greater power as well. Mm-hmm. So cakap okay, when you zoom out, ada apa lagi baby, right? So when you talk about the baby, you know, baby grow, yeah, healthily after nine months, then they will slowly grow up and be, eh, ah, fana macam tu, cipta lah, ah, cipta tu. I think that's that's um enough, kan? Right? But but if uh tak pernah, I always Uh, would like you know, to, uh, parents to test first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I, I think that that's that's really true. Test first, test their knowledge first, because sometimes we don't know. We, we don't know that they know. Ah, uh, itu satu <laughs> kan? They might know more. Ah, uh, then then we think. We, hmm. Lalu we jadi jangan jangan cerita pasal uh, sexual activity sahaja kan? Tapi cerita hmm. juga ah uh, puberty. You know, all this usually will occur when you. Dah puberty, what every yeah, God created all makhluk dalam dunia ini ada opportunity untuk membiak and that's the function of reproductive organ untuk membiak okay. So dengan izinnya nanti bolehlah semua orang membiak okay. So macam kita orang, uh, kita manusia, when kita dah balik, when we reach puberty, kita ada eh? Uh, kita ada peluang untuk membiak. Okey, tapi of course ya membiak ni kenalah pada masa dan 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 timing ya. The timing must be right lah eh. Uh, so that we are healthy enough to uh, to uh, melalui lah eh uh, uh, apa ni mencapai uh, fungsi apa uh, uh, reproductive organ tu macam tu. So um like I said you know we try as much as possible Uh, to like Rebecca also stresses about the opportunity, right? Okay. So not just talk about the uh, function of the reproductive organ. We talk about the puberty and its changes, okay? And then we talk about the relationship, male and female relationship, and also stress the point in uh, relate and eh? relate with greater power. Uh, so ataupun surface of the puberty. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Just. Uh... Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Rebecca, you want to add to that before because uh, now I'm scared of the masa kan dah senang tiga puluh lima. Sebab I nak buka soalan, nak buka question and answer to our audience. Maybe last, uh, Dr. Rebecca, nak add something? Um, I think what uh, the, the scenario that you're in, like Dr. Ruby, is relevant to many parents. Uh, I just want to provide another perspective. Let's say you feel like oh, you already teach your children everything that they need to know about uh, body parts, uh, the, the biological thing that may also be taught in schools, like um, you can start to explore other areas like Dr. Asrin mentioned, relationships, value, gender, those are the things that are not uh, the typical sex education that people have in mind, but it's equally important for a good sexual health. Mm-hmm. For example, you can talk to your friend, uh, your, your children about their friends, the friendships that they are having in school, just to build that trust between you and your children. And then if they have anything like that in their mind, they, they are in love or they are bullied, some they, they will come back and talk to you because there's already that trust in it. Mm-hmm. So there are many dimensions of um, sexuality education that parents can always explore. And it is very important that like relationships, um, um, staying safe, how to use the internet safely. Those are the things that are seldom discussed, but it's very important in this time. All right. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Rebecca and Dr. Azrin. So now I think we have uh, maybe uh, we have 15 to 20 minutes to uh, so I open the floor for the audience kita kalau nak tanya soalan pada directly to Dr. Rebecca or Dr. Azrin ke clear je dah. Ha, so what can we say to children who is confused with their gender? Ha, ada oh, ni soalan hangat ni. So Dr. Azrin, Dr. Azrin ke Dr. Rebecca nak start? You can start first Rebecca. How do you Dr. Rebecca? Uh, so children yang confused with their gender. I think it's important to understand why they are confused at first. So we need to let them know three concepts. So one is sex, gender and sexual orientation. So sex is a characteristic that's already attributed to someone when they are born based on their genitalia. So if it's a penis, then it's a male. The sex is male. It's a, if it's a vagina, then it's female. That's sex. But gender is how someone feels about themselves. So um, for example, uh, a male, most of the male 
those who are born with fitness, they will feel that they are male as a gender. So mm. usually the sex and gender is compatible. But in some cases, it would be different. For example, sex, a male sex might feel that he is a female gender. That's when it's not compatible. And for sexual orientation, it, their feelings towards other um, gender, like, like um, uh, do you like female or male gender? So these are the three concepts that you need to explain to your children. Maybe they might not understand, but you can just tell it in simpler terms that sex is something, uh, a, a tribute that is already given to you when you're born based on your genitalia. Mm -hmm. So it's physical. Gender is how you feel. For example, um, I feel I'm female, so that it, that's my gender. I hope that un clarifies a bit about what um, sex and gender and sexual orientation is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, kita ada soalan lagi. Let, let me read it. I think we students, especially youth nowadays, parents and teachers are becoming more aware of sexual education. Um, hopefully. Okay. Uh, so why can't we make sexual education a subject alone in school? So what what do you think, Dr. Azrin? Why can't we, sorry? Uh, why can't? The, the question is because nowadays kan dah banyak awareness. Uh, about sexual sexual education is so why can't we make sexual education a subject alone in school it's uh, actually already in uh, in the uh, one of the subjects actually yeah? one of the subjects uh, it's just not called sex education okay? uh, but uh, unfortunately it needs a, a, a further reinforcement uh, like we said yeah uh, when we um, call to schools and eh? the teacher uh, uh, find it interesting the way we, we conduct and eh? we deliver the, the information because we don't just give lectures like um, what the teachers are doing, just explaining this is the structure and that's it. Eh? We also have, uh, we show the implications, eh? the importance and what can we do uh, to uh, of our, uh, preventive measures, eh? uh, what are the implications. We talk uh, in, 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 in very we, we conducted usually we call um, a group discussion a eh, group discussion and we play around with our posters eh, for the uh, children to actually uh, label label eh, uh, rather than just uh, one way uh, communication eh. mm -hmm. but it's uh, well, we, we are going somewhere it's just that I think um, maybe we need to expose the teachers on a better way of explaining and uh, which is why uh, we have NGOs and people like us and Rebecca are all interested in, in educating and to help with the uh, delivery of information. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, Dr. Rebecca, you also mentioned, right, uh, the, uh, the, the subject is already introduced at school, but, uh, but the focus is different, right? The focus is on abstinence, yeah? You mentioned earlier. And yes, very much true. The subject is actually called Pandidika Kesehatan or Health Education. So it's a standalone subject, but um, in that subject, it uses the peer syllabus. I think it's Pandidika Reproductive and Kesehatan Social, something along that line. Um, it has a few components, like uh, it not only talks about sexual education, it also talks about um, uh, things like uh, healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. So it's not just uh, sexuality education, but it's most of the part of the subject. But uh, one problem, there are two problems with this syllabus actually. One that is that not comprehensive. That means um, it covers some topics, but not all. Mm -hmm. it, it is also not um, detailed enough. For example, when they talk about uh, reproduction, it doesn't explain uh, uh, explicitly how the sperm meets the ovum. It just uh, roughly go through it. So it's sometimes <laughs> confusing for the student. <laughs> student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's uh, how, where we are now, but with good training for the teachers and more um, positive uh, welcoming from the parents, I believe uh, the, the syllabus will continue to improve. The, the, the syllabus, I think, is not as, as, gen, as I would say, as thorough as Dr. Azrin mentioned, right? It's not like that at all, right? Yeah, you can, I don't I, think so. You can look at their textbook and you will have an overview of how it looks like. So, so I don't think it's like what Dr. Azrin has mentioned. Yeah, can Dr. Azrin? You, yeah. you, you, you baru cakap sikit tu pun dah macam enlightening kan? So, uh, all right. Okay. 
that I explain to actually are the ones, uh, the things that I explain to parents. Lah. When we, our NGO, we have a program with parents as well. Uh, we encourage parents to do this. So I think we cannot just rely on, uh, you know, on the schools lah, eh? mm -hmm. the teachers, uh, to do the education, uh, educating. It needs to come from home as well. Inshallah, it will work to, well together. Because at school, there's too many. They're quite shy to open up, right? When they have their friends, then. Eh? So that's why it needs to be established very early at home and they need to identify that parents, my mom, my dad, yeah, they are my number one source of information. So that's why we need to prepare ourselves. Yes. All right. So ni, so Alani Manari juga, does providing sexual health education in school uh -huh, lead to earlier or more frequent sexual activity later because they're curious and they want to experiment it. Uh, so this is one of the concerns. Uh, I think I've already. Yeah. <laughs> I think um uh, this is a myth uh, that most people have, and and why most people who object, who who are against sexual education are against it because they believe that um sexual education will teach them about it. They become curious and want to experiment. But research, it's, it's not only one research, but many different researches around the world show that it doesn't work that way. In fact, when you empower children with the knowledge of their body parts, why they need to protect themselves, um, and what, what how, how, how um, reproduction happens, they become more aware of it, for example. A, children, a child might not know that they would get pregnant because of sex, but because of sexual education, they know about it mm -hmm. and, and, and they know how to do contraception if they still insist on doing sex. So, mm -hmm. so that's something, uh, that's how sexual education doesn't encourage sex, but uh, actually delays the initiation of sex. So it is proven scientifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's very true. So here, let me watch uh, Okay, my question is, if an individual do not feel comfortable talking to people about sex education, isn't it best to say nothing? <laughs> so, Tazrin, so kalau tak comfortable, macam mana Dr. Tazrin? Itu soalan dia. Kalau tak comfortable, macam mana? Macam baik-baik diam je lah. Yeah, we, um, Maybe because I'm a medical doctor, mm. you know, she's a medical doctor, uh, <laughs> we're quite comfortable you know, talking about it. But um, that's not the re real reason, actually, because we actually um, have um, experience, like, experience um, talking to others, because we also offer training of trainers, like as for my NGO, we also offer training of trainers. And, and we can see, you know, um, those who have... Um, Experience sometimes they, they, they themselves have uh, some experience of sexual assault. Uh, uh, they, they, they have a, um, this a drive or motivation to learn about it. Uh, or sometimes they heard stories or they look at the statistics. Like Pahang is one of the top ones yeah, that uh, teenage um, um, involved in sexual activity at very young age. So when they look at this, uh, they, they, they feel that uh, uh, it's not a, a taboo or uh, something to be embarrassed about. So, so to me, um, some people are embarrassed because of misunderstanding of the term sex education. Okay? Some people are just not used to it. So practice makes perfect. Okay, so um, in our Korea, yeah, some uh, not medical doctors, so we don't just have a medical doctors in the Korea in the faculty. Uh, when we talk about it openly, because we have males and females, in some culture, they don't openly, because we have international lectures as well, eh? <laughs> so they're not comfortable mm. talking about this. Okay? Uh, because we, we, because we, sometimes we have to explain about what we do, community engagement, so our universities encourage us to have community engagement, so we talk about what we do. Eh? So some of them, even talking about pornography, uh, the effect of pornography, you can see them, them are fidgeting. Lah, fidgeting. Eh? So if they're not comfortable, it's not your problem. Okay? <laughs> it's your problem. But to me, your main aim is to advocate. So you, you must try. You yeah? must try to make them feel comfortable. And the main thing is make them understand. Inshallah, if they understand why it is important, the importance of sexual education and what is sexual education is about. It's not just about uh, physical um, 
uh, a state of uh, free from disease, yeah, physically free from disease, but it's also a state of um, um, uh, uh, that that cause a mentally uh, healthy uh, you could be mentally healthy and eh? also sexually uh, so, so, so your your social well being is also healthy yeah? so it, it's a, a complete definition of uh, healthy reproductive system and sexual uh, health is is all about that so if they understand that yeah, then they, they will start yeah, uh, relax a bit lah okay so I think uh, kalau orang tak comfortable yeah you make them feel comfortable by explaining yeah, in yeah. I think using the clear term using macam you cakap instead of using yang bunga-bunga bird tu kan guna terus scientific terms so macam it's much clearer janganlah guna term yang macam mencecarut gitu bukan nak guna term yang mencecarut kan guna macam scientific terms uh, the next question I rasa I nak minta Dr. Rebecca tolong uh, this question Dr. Rebecca uh, so um, uh, uh, because uh, Dr. Azlin mentioned about uh, how parents talk. Uh, so this question tanya, macam mana kalau how do we sisters or brothers, so the, the older siblings can, kalau they are parents not comfortable about uh, talking about sex education to children, so do we need to have a slow talk to our parents so that they will educate our, our younger siblings? Or can the sisters or brothers go and talk to the younger one? So what do we think, Dr. Rebecca? Uh, if it's uh, done by elder siblings, most importantly, you have to make sure that you yourself get the knowledge correct uh, before yes, you start to, to your children. Uh, so it's actually not hard. You can find the resources all over the internet and it's everywhere. So if you want to talk to a younger sibling about it and you're not sure, uh, uh, you have already the scientific, the factual part uh, online. If you also want to add in the value part, you can always talk to your parents. Your parents is shy to talk about the children, but you can always confirm whether the value that you want to instill to your younger siblings is in line to what your parents have in mind. So with the facts and the value are already in your mind, you can start to talk about it with your younger sibling because I believe if you are already you have that awareness in mind, it means that you realize it's important and you didn't have that part growing up, you didn't, you wasn't taught about sexual health growing up and hence you know why it's important and you want to do it with your younger siblings. So with that heart and the knowledge and the value in mind, I think you're good to go. Mm, yes, that, that's, I think your, your answer is uh, very illuminating. Uh, this one, is there a way on how should we teach children to recognize pre uh, predators early? and seek help without the predators realizing it. Because oh, I'm worried about the major statics on sexual predator cases happening among close family members. How do you prevent that from happening? So Dr. Azrin, what do you think? I can't really tell who they are because hmm. family members, because usually we feel very comfortable among family members, right? So like I said just now, the best way is to teach children to protect themselves, yeah? By teaching them, these are the areas that no one except for mama or baba can touch. Yeah, the, the zone larangan. Yeah? So, kalau orang lain touch, that means you should say no. Please do not touch. You teach from very young age. Okay, so that the, the uh, lips area, kan? The lips at dada, kan? Ah, uh, dekat dekat punggung, okay? Dekat maluan. So you teach from the very young age. Okay, to to uh, say no. Okay, or you tell them if you. You're too scared. You start having all this, you know, uh, uh, your, your heart racing, you know, the emotion, feeling as if you're not secure. You're not. You're in danger. You go to an adult that you trust, like father or your mother. You have to tell. That's why do not. Uh, we we you know nowadays I, I used I used to give this talk yeah, to parents yeah, in preparation to to prepare back to school. Eh? Mm -hmm. We used to uh, give motivation yeah, when, when in preparation to. Uh, um, going back to school and we talk about motivation macam mana cara-cara nak belajar nowadays we have to add, <laughs> add eh? um, how to to identify danger okay so you tell at very young age if you feel uncomfortable when someone did this to you even if they are family members like okay, you feel um, uh, insecure or uh, in danger you have to tell them about all right from the person okay? all right so I think the best way is to ask uh, by explaining to them and then teach them how to protect themselves you know? because we can never tell who they are. Yeah, we can never tell too. I have a story. Yeah, can I just share? Oh, please, please do. Please do. Uh, this story was shared with um to me by one of the ASP, the police officer. 
yeah, uh, when we were planning a program together. Yeah, this this officer told me, uh, there's this mother lah, yeah, she, she has to because they duduk dekat Felda lah, duduk dekat Felda, and, and the third pregnancy there's some complication, it has to be delivered in a, a bigger hospital in Kuantan. So uh, bila mak dia balik, ya, yeah, bila mak dia balik, ya, yeah, anak dua orang perempuan tinggal dengan suami, okay, tinggal dengan suami. So bila dia balik daripada Kuantan lah, balik daripada Kuantan tu. Uh, dia, dia realize anak perempuan dia orang ni bergaduh-gaduh lah malam tu nak tidur kan. Tak boleh, tak boleh. Malam ni giliran uh, kakak. Semalam kan adik pun giliran. Malam ni kakak lah uh, main dengan Abah. Lepas tu, tak ada. Semalam kan kakak dah main dengan Abah. Tadi mak dia rasa tak sedap main dengan Abah. <laughs> kan? Macam tu. Malam main dengan Abah. So dia macam tergerak untuk tanya. Main apa kan? Masa tu suami tak ada. So, anak tu cerita. Because they're very small. They do not understand. Yeah? So when, uh, you know, of course lah hancur lah hati seorang ibu. Yeah, bila anak tu explain, mind tu actually, yeah, uh, when uh, the dad, the dad yeah, ask the child yeah, to touch his private part and he touch her private part. Itu itu ayah, uh, itu ayah dia kan, itu ayah dia kan, dia somebody who should be protecting her kan. Tapi buat tadi dia. So yang sedihnya di sini dalam cerita ni, uh, ibu tu bila dengar, of course lah, first thing her first reaction is to make a police report. Yeah. Memang she make a police report, unfortunately after two weeks, yeah, they withdraw. And she withdrew the police report and, and the police officer tu cerita lah, dia tanya kenapa awak nak tarik balik police report ni. Dia kata, kalau suami saya masuk penjara, siapa nak bagi makan. Eh? Kesian pada anak tu because uh, the effect will be sampai dia besar. She will, once she realize what the dad did to her, she will bilang trust to uh, adults. Oh, the parent, eh? somebody who's supposed to be protecting her. So that is why uh, pro teaching children to protect themselves and identify yeah, um, the, the zone larangan is very important yeah. mm -hmm. to some extreme uh, kalau some parents ya yeah, memang ada yang kata mak aja boleh pegang ayah pun tak boleh okay, depends depends mm -hmm. on the, uh, uh, in, in the family lah eh okay, mm -hmm. okay. so uh, uh, ada just one last pasal dah tak boleh dah sorry audience <laughs> i know we are all interested but it's almost that tapi ada this one i think is important which i will minta uh, dr beka to address Uh, Dr. Rebecca, do you think improper sex education, discovering pornography at a young age is the cause of a person being hyposexual? What, what do you think? Um, I actually, to be honest, have never read about it. I don't know if there's a scientific correlation mm -hmm. with um, early pornographic exposure to, being, uh, to hypersexuality. I cannot say for sure. But uh, uh, just my own uh, analysis, I think uh, it could be one of the factors because um, it's uh, it's you are exposed to it at the time where you you are not ready for it. So I think there's a correlation. It may be it not may not be a direct correlation, or it's just a risk factor. I'm not sure because I've never read any research on it. But I'm not sure if Dr. Asprin, you have any input on this. Hello. Awang-awang yeah, dah terdedah pada depan kan? <laughs> Nanti dah kena, kena, kena tutup mic tak? <laughs> so I just okay. add that. Okay. Actually, when when um, pornography is an addiction, addiction, eh? addiction, it's a form of addiction because uh, when when someone uh, expose themselves to pornography, yeah, they 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 will stimulate a rembesan hormon lah, hormon antaranya are uh, uh, dopamine, yeah, excessive dopamine, and then to the Uh, frontal areas and then this uh, overstimulation yeah, if you um, expose yourself eh, in the end our body will react by uh, producing less dopamine and you become addicted more and more addicted to it mm. in order to please uh, the, the yourself for the same um, outcome yeah, to accord uh, in, in all the same uh, stimulation of, uh, that you get uh, when you watch pornography so yes uh, some in, in a way Yeah, if you're addicted to it, yes, it can cause to um, hypersexual activity. Okay. Um, however, yeah, it is however, it's reversible. Yeah, um, it has to be um, under uh, undergo the person has to undergo certain therapy. Right? therapy yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is why we have this NGO Malaysian uh, against pornography mm -hmm. uh, because um, somehow uh, it is uh, related, but it's not di directly. Uh, the cause of it, yeah, but because the involvement of uh, one's involvement in pornography could sometimes just be innocent, um, 
uh, by accidental, mm. yeah, uh, by, by uh, the appearance of this pop up ad and pop ups, can uh, just uh, sometimes, yeah, in, in especially when they're young, when they're exposed into all this overstimulation of dopamine, yeah, uh, they become uh, very very addicted, yeah, because they cannot judge. So yes, I think in some way it can, uh, but it's not a direct cause lah, eh? but, uh, of pornography addiction. Yeah. All right. I think we had uh, um, we had such a great discussion. All right. I think I, I learned a lot. Thank you so much to Dr. Rebecca, Dr. Azrin. I learned, I myself learned tremendously. So on behalf of uh, uh, child bilingualism, I think I would just say on behalf of the kuliah lah, of Kulia of Islamic Reveal Knowledge and Human Science, I um, I would like to express my gratitude for both of you for being here, for accepting my invitation to talk, to uh, uh, share your expertise with our audience, with myself as well. So, um, um, so I think uh, we have to end the session. So it, maybe in future, we will, uh, uh, inshallah, we will call you back, Dr. Azrin and Dr. Rebecca. Thank you so much. Tapi sebelum kita end, kena ambil gambar dulu boleh? Macam biasa, macam biasa. So uh, I'll just stop the recording here.